What's something in your life that you possess? Or maybe something that you had in your past that meant a lot to you? Something that you thought maybe you just couldn't live without? Maybe a, your first vehicle or possibly the home that you live in now? Or maybe you had a baseball card collection when you were younger? Or maybe you currently have a pair of shoes that you think that you just can't live without? Them. I once had a t-shirt, and my wife's going to cringe at this, but uh, I think it was an Alabama Outdoors t-shirt, and I had bought it many years ago, and for whatever reason, it was a red t-shirt. I know y'all, me being an Auburn fan, most people don't believe that, but it wasn't Alabama red. It was just a regular red, but uh, it fit me just right, and I thought it looked pretty good on me, and most importantly, it felt really good. So, but because of all those things, of course, I wore it a lot and probably wore it way too many times, way too often. And so because of that, it got washed a lot. And of course, as you know, when things get washed, they start getting worn. And I know there's a few guys out here, maybe many of you guys out here thinking, yeah, I've got a t-shirt, maybe two like that. And probably a few of the wives out here are thinking, yeah, and I cannot wait until we get rid of that. This T-shirt, I, I, I really liked it, and of course it was, it was getting so bad that I couldn't wear it out anymore. It ended up having holes, and I used it to mow the grass, do yard work, and I'd get little sunburnt spots, just little circles on my back because of the holes, but it was literally falling apart. Of course, we finally, my wife, ended up getting rid of it. Isn't it funny how sometimes the things in our life that seem to be falling apart, we want to keep hanging on to. Well, let me ask you this. Where does the Bible fall or fit into your list of your most important possessions? Is your Bible falling apart? This is the Holy Word of God. This is inspired by our Father. It's His Holy Word. And He tells us that it's profitable to us. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. It's profitable for instruction. It gives us everything we need in our life to get through our daily life. And it helps us become complete in our life. This is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And it also tells us that the Bereans, in Acts chapter 17, it says the Bereans searched the Scriptures daily. Daily. Why were they searching these Scriptures daily? They were searching them so that they could determine whether or not what they were being told was in fact the truth. It's no different from our life today. Sometimes we get told things. How are we going to know whether or not it's the truth? We've got to find out from God's Word. You know, the churches of Christ, I've been told, were once known as Bible-toting, Bible-quoting people. Are we that way today? I want to make a challenge to us all. And Ricky, often from this pulpit, and others... Remind us to read our Bibles daily. But I want to make a challenge to us. Make this, let's all make this our most prized possession in our life. And let's read it and let's use it so much that it quickly falls apart on us. Because it's been said that a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to somebody that isn't. Think about that. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to somebody that is not. We're about to sing a song of encouragement. If you have not yet put Christ on in baptism, having your sins washed away, don't wait. Don't wait another day. We may not get another day. 
If there's something in your life that's amiss or something that you need prayers of the church, we ask you to come as we're led in our invitation song.